where I'm pointing, that is the river Arkavati, which flows down Bangalore. And it joins Kaveri uh, to the southern region of Bangalore. And the uh, region where it uh, confluences with Kaveri is about 100 kilometers away from the city of Bangalore. And this entire Arkavati River, it originates in a place called the Nandi Hills. The Nandi Hills also gives rise to f several other rivers uh, which flow into Tamil Nadu, the Ponnar, um, then I think it's also called the South Pinakini River and many others. And uh, in addition to these little tributaries, this entire northern part of Bangalore had a beautiful network of tanks which helped supply water to uh, this Arkavati. And uh, you see many other tributaries joining Arkavati and one of them is Vrishabhavati, which is a tributary of uh, Arkavati. Arkavati has uh, two tributaries. One is uh, Rishabhavati, which I will be talking about, and another uh, tributary called the Suvarnamukhi, uh, which is, again, not very visible today in Bangalore. And uh, much further, it goes into Tamil Nadu. So if we have to focus uh, to the area of Bangalore itself to understand what is happening to these uh, tributary systems which are contributing to the living uh, river. You see here these three different regions of Bangalore. Uh, Bangalore is a city that is about 1,000 meters above sea level. And there is no major river that flows nearby except for Kaveri, which is 100 kilometers down south. And historically, uh, the entire city grew because people of those days understood the topography of the land and we had hundreds of tanks that were built all over the city. Uh, we had more than 450, Leo should be able to tell me the number. It's 600. Yeah, it's about, we had about 600 uh, tanks in the city and all these tanks were basically built by people understanding the topography of the land. They just built uh, a bund around a uh, valley and rainwater collected there and that rainwater uh, supplied uh, communities not only for their drinking but also for agriculture purposes and people uh, lived here for a long time. It was only in uh, 1940s or so uh, we got the first water supply system which again was from a main uh, big reservoir that was created from uh, the Arkavati region. So understanding Bangalore's drainage pattern, we have these three different regions and the center point is like a ridge. So we have three valleys. Uh, one is the Vrishabhavati Valley, which we will be focusing today on, the Hebal Valley, and the other one is called the Kormangla and the Chalgata Valleys. So going to the Vrishabhavati Valley itself, you see here again, it is the Arkavati River, which originates in the yellow region, flows down the red region, and then comes into um, the southern region and joins uh, Kaveri at the Kanakpura. Each of these blue dots signify the tanks in the region. And as Children, many of us have played in Vrishabhavati and the Suvarnamukhi uh, tributaries. Um, even in 1985, I remember having played in the Vrishabhavati and uh, not Vrishabhavati, the Suvarnamukhi, uh, which was another tributary of uh, Arkavati. And all these little tributaries flowed because they are kind of intricately uh, weaved around these little tanks. And these tanks uh, collected a lot of rainwater and ensured that these little tributaries flowed. And if you see the growth of Bangalore itself, uh, the center part was the original uh, Bangalore many, many years ago. And then came the peripheral zone. And today we are now called the Brihad Bangalore Mahanagara Palike, which is uh, really, really big. It's about to the more than 2,000 square kilometers in terms of area. And when such an expansion took place, we 
completely disregarded this tank system. We built over these tanks, drained them completely. We have bus stands, uh, apartment complexes, stadiums, everything that has come. And as a result, we are left with just 450, which are trying hard to survive. And once these tanks uh, stopped supplying water, Arkavati, the Suvarnamukhi, and Vrishabhavati have become completely dry. Again, going to the origin of Vrishabhavati. Vrishabhavati is a river that takes its origin in the center of the city. It takes its origin at a temple called the Bull Temple, which is a very famous temple in Bangalore. Uh, if uh, you all come to Bangalore, there is a historic walk, and uh, the first place where this historic walk starts in Bangalore is at the Bull Temple. And the story goes that the entire Bull Temple region had a lot of groundnut farms, and there was a bull that apparently came and destroyed the groundnut farms every now and then. And so the farmers prayed, and one of the farmers dreamt that if he built a temple for the bull, uh, the problem would be solved. So came the bull temple, and once the bull temple was installed, the bull that was installed, again, it's a legend uh, which says that it, you know the bull kept growing in height, and they had to nail it uh, on its head to stop its growth. So it's at the base of this temple that Vrishabhavati originates. 